Hello everybody, good evening, welcome to That's Football, welcome back to That's Football. We're now live going from the FA Cup semi-final into the Premier League where Arsenal are away to Wolves. Can they recover from their Champions League exit and keep the Premier League title race alive? Let's not forget, if Arsenal win tonight, they do go top. They also play ahead of... Um, of Man City, uh, they play Tuesday, Man City play Thursday. So if Arsenal win their next two games, they could go four points ahead of uh, Manchester City, who would obviously have two games in hand. So Arsenal need to get their head back in the game. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Look, we saw a very um, lacklustre Man City. They found their way through against Chelsea, but they were obviously suffering from the Champions League exit hangover. Arsenal, um, hopefully... Hopefully Arsenal can get over it quicker because Arsenal wouldn't really be expecting to win the Champions League, whereas the Premier League, I think they think they can do that. So this is their bread and butter. Hopefully they can get back to it. But um, I don't know. I said this on the podcast this week. I'm a little bit worried about Arsenal at, at Wolves and uh, Liverpool at Fulham tomorrow. But uh, look, I think Man City are going to win the league and they'll probably win the double now. But it would be nice if Liverpool and Man City, uh, Liverpool and Arsenal can push them. Uh, along the way. Uh, we've gone through the teams before, but uh, Arsenal are back with a midfield three of Havertz back there and Jesus through the middle. That suggests they want to play a little bit more attacking. I don't personally like Havertz and Odegaard in a midfield three. I don't think it works as well as when they have Jorginho there. And I do wonder why he won't play Partey, who's been fit for quite a while now. Um, I personally think Rice with a more box-to-box, -box, defensive-minded midfielder is a better balance in the midfield. But... Um, he, you know, he knows what he's doing. So we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, well, you're not talking about Man City, Mark? Uh, no, I, um, I've i had my say. Check my, le my, my latest tweets. I had to word it very carefully and purposely leave out referee and Michael Oliver. But it, it's done the trick. It's had about 3,000 likes already. I think people know what I'm talking about. So if you haven't seen that on Twitter, at Mark Goldbridge, my latest tweet, we'll, uh, we'll give you there. Um, I, I think it's disgusting. I, I was listening to the... Um, the match of the day, not well, the BBC uh, punditry afterwards with you know Shearer and Lineker, nothing. I don't, you know what? They've all got podcasts. I don't think they actually watch football like we watch football. I don't. I think they have. They're all part of that. I've played the game brigade, and I just don't. There is. I don't think they're as passionately engaged in football as we are. I don't think they see the injustices in football. I don't. I don't see that. They, they think they see the erosion of football. I think they're in a position where they know for the next 10 years, whatever happens to football, they'll still be sat there on, you know, millions a week, millions of pounds a year to just sit there and not really give any passion. Um, it's disappointing. I, I think if you're in a position of like that as a pundit, then fans are desperate, desperate for intelligent analysis and passion. And I watched it and I thought, are they going to pick up on the things that we were talking about? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They didn't speak about, you know, how why is this referee allowed to man referee Man City games, considering how many you know decisions that have gone in City's favour this year, um, and they didn't mention about, you know, the, the the absolute degradation of officiating standards this season in the in the Premier League and in the FA Cup. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I I, I don't understand why that's not a penalty. I, I to this day. To this, to this minute, sorry, because it's the same day it happened. I don't understand how VAR hasn't told Michael Oliver that's a handball. I don't understand it. I have to balance it with the fact that Chelsea have only got themselves to blame. They had massive, massive, massive chances to win the game. But um, that doesn't take, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. Anyway, uh, what are your thoughts? I think that um, Wolves are a very good team. Um, Arsenal need to show some real character here. Um, it's hard... It's hard to show character and mental strength when you're fighting a losing battle. And and Arsenal might let that into their heads. They might feel, what are we fighting for? You know, even if we do win and fight really hard, we're still not going to catch Man City. But they've got to believe they can. And I think we're going to learn a lot about Arsenal tonight. I really do. Uh, Yoda says Arsenal are tired. Well, the, the same players are out there, Yoda. The same the same players are out there. They're still you still got your... Uh, your Sackers, you still got your Declan Rices, your Salibas. They're still they're still out there. They're still fighting. They're still in this race. So let's let's see if they can do it. 
They could do with a good start. They could do, you know, one thing that Arsenal haven't done in recent weeks, whether it's Aston Villa, Bayern Munich, they haven't gone out there and scored first for a long time, have they? And they nearly did there. Cross came in, Havertz got a good shot on it in the box, but it's straight at the keeper. And that's what they need. They could do with one of those going in. But it didn't. What do you think about the FA Cup final, Mark? We're not in it yet. We're not in it yet. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. If, it, if, if, if we beat Coventry tomorrow and Chelsea had done what they should have done against uh, City, I think it would have been a really exciting final. I think City against Man United or City against Coventry, uh, there's a massive chance of you can predict that winner today. Back to the Premier League. Do you think there will be controversial refereeing situations in this match? It's inev inevitable. The fun part is how bad will it be, says Havard. And um, Mark, I agree that Ten Hag has given chances to Manu and Ganacho, but isn't he also playing them into the ground? It has to impact them. Why are we talking about Man United, Nate? At least I had some pleasure with QPR winning tonight, says James. Um, just want to say congratulations to my mate Ryan Chambers for finishing his uni assignments, for, says James Llewellyn. Uh, is Odegaard in? Arsenal trying to start this game fast. You can see that. Did a similar thing against Villa last week, but they just couldn't score. And also, we must also give Wolves a lot of credit. I mean, Wolves have probably lost about 10 points this season, which means they're in a false position. But also, they've had a lot of injuries themselves. Um... Kieran Parsons says, I, Mark, just wanted to say, listen to your podcast as normal and have to agree with your comments on some Arsenal fans saying Mikel out, etc. It's silly, says Kieran. Oh, mate. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. There was this guy who phoned up on the radio this week in the UK uh, straight after Arsenal got knocked out by Bayern Munich, basically saying that Arteta has been found out and he needs to get sacked. And you, 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 you lose faith in... Look, I've lost faith in the PGM, MOL, the Premier League. And the referees a long time ago. You know, they're in positions of power. They're paid to be there. I have no faith in them. Football fans aren't paid to support their club. But you sometimes do lose faith in football fans. Because I'm like, why, 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 why on any level would you want to sack Arteta for getting knocked out of a quarterfinal of the Champions League when you're second in the Premier League? And you haven't won the Premier League in 20 years. I mean... Only the club with the highest standards in the world. And that, that's a Real Madrid thing to do. Knocked out the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Second in your league, you've got to go because our standards are to win it every year. Why would Arsenal sack Arteta in that sense? It wouldn't make any sense. I think I, I agree with you, Exilis. I think he's done a very good job. Gary Morgan, thank you very much. Yeah, no United stand tonight. Um, part of the reason was, I just think the news around United at the moment is just a little bit boring. Um, I'm bored of talking about Jason Wilcox. And I think the injury crisis is a little bit overblown. I don't want to be doing a show saying, oh my God, what are we going to do? I, I disagree. I disagree. I don't know about you, but like the United, Mason Mount's injured, Amrabat's injured, Camboala's injured. And I, I actually don't agree with the night before that moaning about training or injuries. I just don't think that negativity helps us. I think we go into the game tomorrow. We've got more than enough players to win that game. Like, if we have to play Casemiro at centre-back, we have to play Casemiro at centre-back. We've still got established internationals that Coventry can only dream of. And yeah, they'll give us a good game and yeah, they might beat us, but... We, we can't be moaning, we can't be making excuses or moaning about it. We, we Let's see what happens in the game tomorrow first. Uh, liking uh, Trash says, Wolves would have been fighting for Europe. Shame they were robbed of nine or ten points. I agree. Connor Susher says, American here. In the UFL, they broadcast the ref's radio comms during big calls to improve accountability. Oh, we definitely should have this, Connor. We, we definitely, definitely should have this. Um, I mean, I don't think in the FA Cup we even get it. 
Um, in the Premier League, we get it about three weeks late. But I would love the audio of that handball. I'd love it. Let's play it out between us because there's a Wolves player injured here. So I'm Michael Oliver. I watch the free kick. I see the wall break. I see Jack Grealish's arm stretch out. I see it hit his hand and I say no, no handball. I then wait for VAR. And I probably, because Michael Oliver's done this before, when, when Doku fouled McAllister, before VAR could even look at it, he was saying, not a foul for me. He's got the both gone for the ball. It's not a foul for me. So he's already loading up their misconceptions by putting it in their ear. So he may well have said, natural hand movement, not a handball for me. So Michael Oliver, in my experience, doesn't use VAR rights. He gets in there verbally before they even look at it to, you know, imprint his opinion on them. Um, but if I was VAR and I'm looking at that handball, I would say, well, the wall is there to block the shot. The wall is broken. Grealish's arm has gone out and he's blocked the shot with his arm. It's handball. The wall's only function is to block the shot and he's blocked it with his arm. It's a handball. Why... Why would the why would VAR and Michael Oliver both make a minority decision that it's not a handball? So, I I, I despair. I de I despair at it. But I've been talking about it every week with Will and you who what, listen to the podcast. Every week we've been talking about it. The, the, I always would like look. I don't think the Kyle Walker one on Jackson was a penalty. If it was bias against Man City, I would say that was a penalty as well. I don't think that was a penalty. I don't do that. I don't do that. Like, there's no point lying to yourself. We can. We, we. I would love it to be another injustice, but it wasn't a penalty. But the the handball one, I I can't. I can't make a case for it. I can't make a case for it at all. I don't think it was a handball last week against Bournemouth for United, and I'll take it. But I don't think it was. Anyway. We're here in the Premier League. City fan here, buzzing with the win, but we got very lucky they had Jackson. Could have had a mannequin and have scored more, says Hessen. I Look, from a purely football base, if you're City, you're over the moon. That I mean, City were not were not good today. They, they didn't play well. They played with a hangover. And Chelsea should have won the game without the referee. But um, that's one of those games, if you're City, where you're absolutely over the moon because you found a way to win. Um, Kieran Parsons says I uh, completely agree Mark you can see the progress we've made since Arteta came in and you can see where we want to go and how we will get there thanks Kieran uh, appreciate that well Arsenal having a lot of the ball here in the first few minutes could be a good sign because Wolves can be quite a progressive side themselves and Arsenal playing on the front foot here and moving the ball around quite well is a good sign if they can find the back of the net. And that's been their problem in the last few games. I don't think they've gone ahead in their last three. Saka's header straight at the keeper. Hessen's gifted a membership. Thank you very much, mate. What wine blend are you on tonight, says Zillis. Oh, good question. I like this. So I was on the Pinot Noir last week. I'm on something this week that begins with Z. Made from rare Austrian Austrian grapes. Um, let me see if I can remember it. Red wine made from red. I'm sure it begins with a Z. It's not Zinfandel. Mm, I can't find it. It's not Zinfandel, no. Mark, I watched the Portuguese League and uh, recently they've been making refs announce any VAR decision to the whole stadium after the review. Says Tiago, good idea. I'm going to go... Um, um, one minute. 
Well, why don't you be a minute? I was right. I will tell it you now. Okay, I was right. It's called Zweigelt. Zweigelt, which is spelt Z W E I G E L T. I've never had it before. Probably never have it again because I don't I've never bloody heard of it, but it's not too bad. Um, it is also known as Rotburger, is an Austri Austrian hybrid grape variety created in 1922 by Frederick Zweigelt, who later became director of the Federal Institute of uh, Viticulture. Um, so there you go. It's quite a niche wine by the side of it. Dougie, I'd never heard of it before. Which is a shame because I would buy it again, but obviously it's quite a niche wine, so I probably won't buy it again. But it's not bad. I preferred it to the Pinot Noir I had last week. Uh, Potch Jackson, we are shit. I always hated you in your opinion, but I want to apologise. You're right. Why have I never seen City being robbed? Referees investigates the CFC ballers. Thank you very much, mate. Someone just said Super Chats, Mark, of which I've caught up with all of them. Raymond, what are you talking about? Super chats, Mark, in big letters. Like, literally just read the last one. I've been on them all night. Uh, good question here from Harishev. He says, would you rather watch Ange Ball and finish fifth or Mourinho and finish second? It's a good question. It's almost the West Ham paradox, isn't it? West Ham want to get rid of Moyes, and yet Moyes has won them a European trophy and kept them hovering around the top eight. Which I think is way above West Ham's level. So will West Ham fans be happier in mid-table, not in Europe, playing better football? Goldby John Wine is better than Jackson, says Quinton. Um, look, I think you always want to play good football, but I think also success is important. And they're not the thing is I don't like those hypotheticals of would you rather finish fifth playing good football or second playing boring football because they're not mutually exclusive and you shouldn't have to you, you shouldn't have to make that choice I personally think your demand as an owner should be to play good football And if you go, if you do, if you recruit a Conte or Mourinho, then you're going into it eyes open, aren't you? That you're not going to play good football. So as long as you've got owners who want you to play good football, that's the most important thing, isn't it? I tell you what, I do sense with Arsenal that the problem is putting the ball in the back of the net. That's their big confidence thing at the moment. Would I swap Rashford for Anthony Gordon as proper? Yes. Yes, I would. Newcastle wouldn't, but I would do it. Yeah, I think he's exactly the sort of player that we need. Did we play better without Haaland? Did City play better without Haaland, says Mojo? No, no, City were, City were not good today. They weren't better without Haaland. I don't think it was because Haaland wasn't playing, um, but they weren't, they weren't, they were beatable today. Arsenal definitely need the first goal here. They've started off better, but you definitely get the feeling that if they don't, if Wolves were to score first, those heads are going to drop. Lovely ball into Havertz, back into Odegaard, and he shoots wide. Yeah, 
Yami says, I'm, an, I'm a West Ham fan. We're tired of Moyes ball. And as, as, as you said, they're not mutually exclusive. We have a decent enough team to finish where we are right now while playing good football. Fair point. Hi, says Jake. Jarek, hope you're doing well. Thanks for being a member. Get your badge in. Silas says, if Arsenal had a decent striker, they could win everything with this team. Oh, I still don't like your balance of your midfield. And you do. I've said about Arsenal for a while now. They still are a left back, a midfielder and a striker away from being complete. And yet, they fought for the title two years in a row. Uh, what type of music do you like, Marks? A sheep. Uh, at my at my my time of life, I play quite a bit of pool and darts and stuff when I want to relax. And I've got my playlists. And if I'm being honest, it's 80s and 90s. And it's I'll listen to like an, a U2 album while I'm playing a bit of pool. Or you know, I've got a playlist which has got about 100 songs in it, which ranges from Radiohead to Oasis to Pulp to Shed Seven to Blue Tones to um, Charlatans, Suede, all that sort of stuff. So, but I don't listen to music massively, not like I used to. Have you had Hungarian wine, Marx? As Bal, I probably have done in my time. Made a meal and threw it up on Sunday. I've got a lot of things to learn. Said I was and I'll be leaving one day. Before my heart starts to burn. Oh, come on. We need to we need to pump this up a little bit. It's Saturday night. Let's start. Give me some stuff to rank out of ten. I've ranked I've ranked funerals out of ten. I've ranked my wedding out of ten. I've ranked. I, I can do anything. I basically live my life ranking things out of ten. This wine, probably a seven, actually. Good cross in the box. No one's there. Odegaard. He should have hit that first time, Havertz. They're almost, Arsenal are almost trying to pass it into the box. Rice. Oh, just wide. It's definitely their problem, Arsenal. Putting the ball in the back of the net is their kryptonite at the moment. It's the thing that's derailing them. I'm a hairdresser and I used to cut Charlton's singer's hair. This is Max. What's your thoughts on Balkan football? Underrated or irrelevant? Sing me something new, says Ignorant Weed. And Hessen says, are you getting EAFC PTSD seeing Wolves again? Why? What happened there? I had a good stream on Friday. Uh, Arteta's unwillingness to trust the bench is my only issue with him. Sell the Deadwood if you're not going to use them. Love from Alabama, says RT. Well, look, I look at my Arsenal bench, to be fair, and I think, well, there are players on there like Vieira and Partey, which would allow you not to play Havertz in a midfield three. But he doesn't seem to fancy them, does he? 
Create a starting lineup with one player from each club, says Khalid. I can't be asked, mate. I can't be asked. Top three sources for chips, Mark. Mmm. I tell you what, it's a bit sweet, but I do like sweet chili. Don't know whether it's good with chips. I think with chips, is gravy a sauce or a, is, is gravy a sauce? Because gravy and chips for me is the best, but I don't know whether gravy classes itself as a sauce. Um, I, I do. I am quite partial to a mayo and chips. Uh, obviously, ketchup ketchup's a classic. Um, but I, I like gravy with a bit of it with a, with chips. I think that's the best. Um, Havard says, real fast, what's your worst ever 11 in the Premier League and how will you rank your last toilet visit? Again, I'm not going to go through 11s from different players. I don't have the brain capacity to do that tonight, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, how would you rank your last toilet visit? Oh, mate, probably I did rank it. Um, it was, it was, I was shitting like a crow. I don't know why. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. I've had, I've eaten something in the last couple of days that's loosened everything up. Let's put it that way. I'll give it a two. It wasn't enjoyable and, um, didn't sound good. Let's move on. Joseph says, are you going to play football manager? Uh, I've got no plans to play football manager. I enjoy it, but I haven't got any, I've got no time or plans to do that. I mean, look, honestly, I haven't got time to do, to do cooking with Goldbridge or driving with Goldbridge. I'd rather do that than play football manager. So it's low. It's, it's, you know, we've all got those things in life we'd like to do that we don't have time to do. And I think football manager is one of those for me now. I've already forgotten. It's it's seat seat gelt or something. The red wine I'm drinking tonight. Best flavour of wine gums, Mark. I quite like the black ones. Is it black currant? I don't really eat sweets now. I love sweets, but they're not. Uh, I have to be careful about sugar spikes, as boring as it is. Wolves on the attack here. Good play. Oh, it deflected. I thought it was going to go over Raya's head. It went into his arms. No, you're getting the wrong thing. I'm not ranking things. I'm ranking it out of 10. So there's one thing, and I have to give it a score out of 10. Like, you know, what, what was your... Uh, rank how you felt when your dog died, or something like that out of 10 you know it's not like ranking things uh start bench cell pundits genus gabby murphy oh my god a toro i mean fucking hell can can i sell all three i mean they are probably three of the worst um you know what? I'd probably start Ogbonglahor over Genus and Murphy. I find him the least offensive of the three, to be honest. Um, I actually think a lot of what Gabby does is because he's on TalkSport. Um, Janus is on the BBC. Like, he doesn't have to be an idiot. And Murphy, fucking hell. Yeah. It's true what they say about some footballers, though, isn't it? That their brain cells are in their feet. Uh, somebody said that to me once. They said, if you think about it, every 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 lad wants to be a professional footballer. And if you become a professional footballer, you're in the top 0.0001% in the country. So if you're going to make it there, you're extremely um, fortunate based on the odds. So what are the chances that you're going to be that fortunate and intelligent? It's a good point. Saka's in. Oh, he's messed it up. Odegaard. They're not going to score from here. They've messed it up. Whoa. You see, this is Arsenal. This is Arsenal at the moment. They just can't put the ball in the back of the net. Uh, 
Have you watched The Wire, says Ricky. I tell you what, I'm looking forward to, we'll, we'll be done here about half nine, so that's a good time to, a quick shower, get into bed, watch a film, Saturday night, big game for United tomorrow, so watch a film till about one o'clock. I find if I stay up late, I sleep better. If I try and go to bed early, I don't get to sleep. Again, another good cross behind Trozard. I did try the wire, but um, I just couldn't get on with it. Um, I gave up on the Sopranos. Yeah, I mean, I am a real culture vulture when it comes to TV. I'm, I love film and I love TV, but I've made a few, I've done a few Nicholas Jacksons, let's put it that way. I've missed a few open goals because The Wire is meant to be very good and The Sopranos is meant to be very good and I gave up on both of them. But, I, but, I, but you know what? I think I gave up on them too early because I think with Breaking Bad, I watched it because my best mate had just finished it and said it was amazing. And if he if that hadn't been ringing through my ears, I think I'd have given up on Breaking Bad after three or four episodes because I didn't really find it massively compelling at the start. I mean, it becomes brilliant. But um, yeah. Out of 10, Pringles, Maguire's trim, a ghost wipe. None of that makes sense, Hessen. Start bench sale based on fun to watch. Zahar, Balassi, or Tarabat, says Rend. Um, well, Zahar's number one. Um, and I'd probably sell Balassi. Happy 420, everyone. Stay high and stay happy, says Karan. What's your favourite pint to have in a pub, says Jack? I I'm not a beer snob, so I don't. I've always said that. Shahin says, back to back watch alongs. Life is awesome. And if you were to invent anything of your desire, what would it be, says Christopher? Some of these questions are a little bit above my head on a Saturday night. I've got to be honest. I'm sharper in the week. Um, what would I invent if I could invent anything? Well, I've, I've got to say like a cure for cancer. I mean, come on. You, you can't, you know, we can have banter, but let's be honest. Um Anybody who didn't invent a cure for cancer has got to be... You know, I'd rather have um, rocket feet that can fly you with jets. Rank Mark Goldbridge out of 10. Heady. Haddy. What? Like self... Self... Um, ranking. I can't do that. Out of 10, popping your cherry. David, I'm not going to rank that. Um, I will. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember. Um, I don't think it was that good for them either. So I'd probably say... It wasn't that memorable. You know what? I'm, I actually genuinely am trying to think. I remember the circumstances... But the actual thing, it you know what it was, I don't know whether it's the same for everybody else. Maybe some of you haven't done it yet. It was almost like, I don't, I don't imagine how it, how it can be for anybody that first time earth shattering. It's almost like your first cap for England. Like it's basically about getting the job done and not making an idiot of yourself. Well, we've had half an hour here and Arsenal's problem is the same problem we saw against Aston Villa. It's the same problem we saw against Bayern Munich. They have this lack of ability to put the ball in the back of the net and now Wolves hit the post and nearly go 1-0 up. And it wouldn't surprise me if they do go 1-0 up because Arsenal just seem, seems to have this brain freeze in putting the ball in the back of the net at the moment. And as we know in the Premier League, if you don't score, there's a very high chance the opposition will. Best hard-on you've ever had, Sheep. Yeah, OK, we're not going down this road. 
Thanks for read reading, says Christopher Beck. Also, I've pre-ordered your book. Well, there you can do it through the scanning the QR code. Thank you very much, everybody who is supporting that. You're absolute legends. You can see it on the shelf behind me there. Um, your best five cheeses, says Ian. I don't really eat a lot of cheese. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll sprinkle a bit of cheddar on an omelette with some mushrooms and peppers, and that's nice. And I'll sprinkle a bit of parmesan on the top of a, of a spag bowl. But I'm not really somebody who goes in the fridge and goes, ooh, give me a bit of Wensleydale grommet. But what I do like, actually, I like it at Christmas. We normally have it on one of the nights between Christmas and New Year. I like one of those baked camemberts where you put it in the oven, you bake it, and then you dip things like carrots and celery and cucumber and bread in it. That's very nice. That, that is very nice. Wensleydale is very creamy and nice. I do like it, Stuart. But again, probably only ever have it at Christmas with some cranberries in. Gold Edition says, will you watch Fallout? I've already watched it, mate. I thought it was quite good. I've never played the game. I've never played the game. I've heard of Fallout. I've never played the game. But I was quite impressed by the TV series. And actually, it's a bit like The Last of Us. I've never played The Last of Us. And I enjoyed that as a TV series as well. So I'd love them to do a TV series of Red Dead Redemption, actually. Aiden says, did you ever attend any League of Ireland games? Um, the fact that I'm having to think, I don't think so. They're good. My mate lives in Drogheda and um, he goes very regularly. And I think they play it through the summer as well, don't they? Which I think is really clever. They play the Irish League through the summer so that when the Premier League and everything shuts down, they get better uh, attendances. All these penalty decisions cheats get away with. This is five Cantonars. Uh, Odegaard with the free kick here. He'll be whipping the cross in. There's a actually just talking about video games. There's a there's a clip on our TikTok at the moment of me against Seb playing the latest WWE game, and um, I was talking to somebody about this today. I mean, he's six. And he can pretty much beat me at the wrestling game. I mean, I, I don't want to spoil it, but um, I was very lucky. But um, he's six and he can beat me. And I was thinking about this. I thought I was quite good at gaming when I was younger. But I didn't start. I didn't get my Mega Drive till I was about 10. So he's got four years on me. Top three video games. Red Dead... First two, first for me, says Hessen. Oh, I like I like the Grand Theft Auto games, I've got to be honest. How Mark, hi Mark, how was the City Chelsea game? Couldn't catch it. Also, happy 16th of April, everyone, says Yannick. Um, it was a shit game, really. Chelsea should have won. They had the best opportunities, and they should have had a penalty, but the referee was Michael Oliver. And then City did what I think we all thought City would do at some point, was score, and then they win the game because Chelsea couldn't. Top three favourite video games, done that. Uh, done that as well, thank you very much. Uh, Hughes Lad says, well done on your pronouncing of Drogheda. I've been there. I've been there a few times, actually. Drogheda Castle. Oliver Cromwell's really not popular there. I uh, I remember getting, where uh, me and my mate uh, came back from Dublin. Got picked up by his dad. First time I'd met him in the car. And within the first five seconds, he was telling me what a shit Oliver Com Cromwell was. And uh, he's not, he's not, he's not well liked. I mean, Oliver Cromwell was was not well liked by the English, actually. He's a bit of a shit, really. Um, let's put it this way: he, he he had no problem having people, innocent people, killed. Uh, the hot Tash says, "Any favourite pubs in Dublin? Just let them know in the chat. If you know, you know." Don't go Temple Bar in Dublin. Temple Bar is like going to Disneyland when you go to America. If you want to know what real America's about, don't go to Disneyland. And if you want to know what real Dublin's about, don't go to Temple Bar. Oh, I tell you what, that tackle on Havertz is bad. I mean, that's bad. Oh, I like this. We've got a really good question from Max. He says, rate having a bath out of 10. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. 
Um, this week's biscuit poll, please, Mark. Club, penguin or blue ribbon? I will do it for you, The Hills. Um, everyone else can get involved in that. Uh, it's not going to be a red, by the way, but it was, it was, um, it was bad. What was it? Penguins Club. I mean, these are, these are old, aren't they? Blue Ribbon. I mean, I can barely remember what a Blue, blue Ribbon was. Start bench cell, the Thames, the Seven or, seven or the Humber. I mean, I, I'm no good on rivers, Kenneth. I'm better on bridges. Um, I prefer rivers to sea. I've, I've done a clip on that before, but... Um, good save by Ray, you know. That was going to go in. He tipped it onto the post. That chance a few minutes ago. Uh, Football Goat says, Hi Mark, I'm from America. Can I order your book as a signed copy, please? Says Football Goat. Basically, if you go to... If you get your camera phone on the QR code when it goes round... Um, I uh, don't know whether James is still here. We could pin the link if it's there. Um, if you want a signed copy from WH Smith, it will only deliver it in the UK. So you need to know someone in the UK who can order it for you and send it to you. Or... You can order it from Amazon to the States. And when I'm there, you can uh, get it signed because I will be coming over to do some signings and, and a bit of a tour. So, um, pa -pa -pa Pick up a penguin. Oh, dear. Terrible ball out from the back and a wide shot from Wolves. 37 minutes gone here. It's, it's, you know what? This game's going exactly how I thought it would go. If Arsenal can't score, they're going to become less and less confident. It's, it's very the same as Villa. I think Arsenal started off well, but they can't get the ball in the back of the net. J.O. says, anyone noticed that he wouldn't answer? Afraid. Uh, don't know what you're talking about, mate. Rank Agarlo for United, says is it? Five. Uh, J.O., I've only just read your chat. How many genders are there? You know what you can do with that, J.O.? You can shove it up whatever arse you've got because I am not involved. I don't get involved in that sort of stuff. So don't start... I'm not scared of you and I'm not scared of your stupid comments. What, what you're trying to do is you think you're clever. Oh, I'll do a £2.50 super chat and I'll try and catch Goldbridge out so I can cancel him. And I don't think anybody really gives a shit about your gender conversation. We're, we're talking about football and fun stuff. So, go forth and prosper. I'm not scared of your conversation. I just think it's a stupid conversation. Um, bourbons or custard creams? Bourbons, I think. Oh, I had the question from Max, which I thought was very good. What would you rank a bath out of 10? Um, for me, in the bath versus shower debate, I think it's very seasonal. I think if it's a cold October night, it's dark outside, um, you've got the fire on downstairs, and a lovely hot bath just to, you know, relax you at the end of the day has got to be touching a nine. But if it's the middle of June, and it's hot and it's sunny, the last thing you want is a sweaty bath. You want a shower. So... I don't want to bath in the morning either. I want to shower. So there are there are different... The bath versus shower debate is, is multifaceted. But if I'm giving a bath a rank out of 10, are we getting serious here? Are we talking a bit of molten brown shower gel? Are we talking a bit of bubble bath? Are we talking um, bath salts? Because if we're just talking a bath with water in it, you've just lost yourself two points. What's the temperature of the bath? If we're talking about, oh, we've got to be careful of the hot water, again, you've lost another point. What's the depth of the bath? If we're not, if, you know, if we're on a water meter and you can only have it up to your, you know, the thigh, forget about it. So there's a lot of things we need to talk about if we're going to rank a bath. So I'm going to give you a good, I would give a bath a 9 out of 10. If it's cold outside, I can have bubble bath, I can have it hot, and I can have it up to when I'm in it 
where it's covering my cock and my chest and you know but not too deep that i can't rest my back there and it's not going over my over my mouth so that would be a nine out of ten bath for me if i can't have it above my, above my knee and it's got to be room temperature and there's no bubble bath in it it goes from a nine to i'm sorry a three simple as that also depends who's in how big the bath is and who's in it because it could be a ten um Havard says, I've never seen De Bruyne put in as many tackles as he did today. Jermaine Genus, Kevin De Bruyne made one tackle. You are right, Mark. Um, Nicholas Cage, I'm bored of this question. I've answered it so many times. I'm sorry, Nicholas. Best goal you've ever seen live on TV and in person. I've asked this question. I've been asked this question about 100 times over the last seven years. And I've probably given different answers. I'm so bored of it. I'm so bored of it, Nicholas. I'm sorry. At least I've answered your question and, you know... I can't I can't answer this question anymore. Best goal you've seen live on TV and in person. Because I've given so many different answers. At some point, people are just going to go, he's full of shit, look. He, he, he changes it every day. Um, have you climbed Westport in May? I've never been there, Liam. Norway's chances of qualifying for the World Cup, says Evan. Don't care enough to know, mate. Um, not that I don't care about Norway. I don't care about international football enough to know how anybody's doing anyone noticed uh, i've done that one from idiot face can i speak spanish says matthias hola por favor command spell two hi mark love the content top three one season wonders no tom no stop it i am not going to think about anything longer than a quick reaction so if you start asking me stuff like top three one season wonders I have got to think of probably the last 30 years of football. Not going to do it. If you ask me to create a Premier League eleven of the season's flops, I've got to think too much. I'm not going to do it. If you want me to make a team that would win the league with one player from every team, I'm not going to do it. I have, I do do it a lot, but not tonight. I'm going to be honest with you. If you want to ask questions, they've got to be like, you can answer it now. Uh, did you know penguins are just bourbons coated? Well, it's pretty obvious, Ginger, isn't it? I can't eat penguin bars anymore. Once bit into one, only to find a wiry hair baked into it. I really hope it was bread hair. <clears throat> the bad elf, you are bad. Cross from a winger. Sorry, what's this? Cross... Cross from a winger to score a header or through ball from a midfielder to score 1-1-1. One, one, one. Do I score them both, Puller? Because I'll take the header. Here's Saka on the right. Two minutes to go. We've not been talking about the game enough because it's been a bit drab. Have you seen the have you all seen the video of Tiago Silva crying and Madawaki in the background cackling with Grealish? Well, you know what that's all about, Angel. It's about the sort of knobheads that play football these days. And it's about the sort of recruitment that Chelsea have done. And I'm not picking on Madawiki because he won't be the only one. They've recruited a load of young players who are basically, you know, light switch players. They'll turn it on occasionally, but not all the time. And what you've got with Thiago Silva is a goal for Arsenal. That's a big goal. Trozard, they finally put the ball in the back of the net. And it ends up being a big goal. A big, a big good goal. Arsenal score first and they needed to score first. Their heads were starting to drop and they put the ball in the back of the net and it's Trozard in off the post into the top corner right on half time. There's a bit of moaning going on from Wolves. I don't know whether they have been um, robbed again. It's Havertz, Jesus. Well, if anything, Jesus got fouled. I don't, I don't know. Wolves have got no complaints there. I mean, if, I tell you what, if Trozard meant that, the way he cuts across it, and it goes into the top corner, watch this. I don't know whether he means it. I think he just throws his foot at it because the finish is unbelievable. It's in the top corner off the post. And if he meant to slice across it, it's absolutely fantastic. I don't think he did, but either way, it will count. 
Can you please find the derivative of times four, says Sack. And if Premier League teams were holidays, what would they be, says Jack. Well, you can answer that in the chat. Um, we were talking there about Thiago Silva crying and Madawaki apparently having a laugh with Grealish. Um, unfortunately, it's what the Premier League has created, really. Um, there are a lot of footballers that are light switch players now. Man United have got some as well. Chelsea have got some. They're on ridiculous money, doing the thing that they love, and it's absolutely killed any consistency of motivation. So they love being a footballer, they love the money, they love the glamour, but they've got absolutely no dedication or idea on how to be a consistent footballer. Um, and yet Thiago Silva would be somebody that's old school, who, you know, just loves football. And he will realise that that's probably his last chance to play in a cup final for Chelsea. Um, whereas Madawaki will be thinking, what are we doing tonight? How prolific was the Cup Winners' Cup, says Luna. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, overhead kick to win the game or a hat-trick against Liverpool, says Sheep. Oh, well, if the overhead kick wins the game, I'll take that. Favourite county to visit for the weekend, says Zinc. You're, you're putting me to sleep with some of these questions. You're better than this. You're much better than this. I'm going to change the rules in a minute. I agree, Mark. Just a shame we are at the state in football where players care more for money than the crest. Good goal by Arsenal, by the way, says Angel. Well, who's the idiot? The person who's laughing at the end of losing a game you should have won in a cup semi-final or the club that pays them? I think it's very easy to go in on the players. But, you know, Chelsea have got however many fans who really care about the club. Think about Angry Ramp Man who passed this week. Absolutely loved the club, didn't he? You've got all these fans who really love the club. And then you've got players who don't get it. Who's to blame? The owners. Um... There is, I'm sure there's a castle in Drogheda, Christopher. I'm sure there is. I mean, it's very niche, but... Um... Maybe I'm wrong. There's something in Drogheda. No, there is. There's a fort. That's it. I knew there was something. There's something on a hill. Might be a Londis, actually, or a spa. Is there any more special guests coming on the podcast? Any, any time? Funnily, you should say that. Hiking in the Highlands or camping in Cornwall, says Elias. Hiking in the Highlands. Scooby Doo. We're not at half time yet. I don't think Wolves can have any complaints about that goal. A few people are moaning about it. I don't. I'd, if anything, if there was anything in the goal, it would be a foul on Jesus, surely. So I don't really think that there's any complaints there. It's half-time. It's 1-0 to Arsenal. They've got the goal. And um, they've still looked, at times, as nervy as they did against Villa and Bayern. But the big difference here is that they lead and they have the goal. Oh, there's no United stand tonight, A2, because there's absolutely nothing to talk about. And I'm not, I refuse to do a video about injuries and be negative before a cup semi final and start moaning about injuries. I don't think it's an excuse not to beat Coventry tomorrow. We know we've had an injury crisis all year, and I'm not going to do a video about something negative ahead of a big game tomorrow. So I'll talk about it tomorrow morning on the news show, but I'm not making a show out of that. Um, what do you think will win? Who do you think will win the treble? First, next, after City. I don't think anyone will, Sean. I think it's very hard. I think Man City won a treble because of the advantages their financials have given them. I, th I don't think it can be done. I think if Man City weren't in this league, it would be impossible to build a squad that Man City have had over the last few years. Um, look, rightly or wrongly, Man City have got the best manager and an amazing squad, and that's why they won the treble. Unless you, If you can build that, you've got a chance. But Arsenal don't have the capacity to build a squad of that good a player with the financials that they've got and neither to Liverpool so Man United did it in a, an incredible way I don't even know how we did it and it was amazing Man City did it in a way that was incredible but also because they had 
such an amazing depth of squad. I don't think, if you haven't, the first thing you've got to do is have that squad. Arsenal haven't got that squad. And Liverpool haven't got that squad. So, until they, until you see that, I don't see it. Um, Ian of Liverpool talking about Boohoo. Yeah, we're not sponsored by Boohoo on this show, Ian. Pub roast or a pork pie ploughman's mark, says Mank. Um, oh, pub roast. I mean, for me, if you've never had a ploughman's, it sounds better than it is. It, 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 it doesn't... Ploughman sounds like something that goes on in the showers, but it's not. It's um, it's an old English job, ploughing the fields, basically. And again, that's not sexual. You had this, like, metal thing that you push along and you dig a hole in the ground and, and blah, blah, blah. And there is this dinner in UK called a ploughman's, and it's basically pork pie, which is mince wrap, uh, pork meat wrapped in, like, pastry. And then you get pickle, cheese, and a couple of other things. Um, I would give it a very generous 3 out of 10 as food. Whereas a roast dinner, I mean, a good beef roast dinner with Yorkshire puddings, good gravy, good roast potatoes, good runner beans, carrots, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe even a bit of creamed leek you're talking nine on ten. A good roast chicken that has got, that is moist with stuffing and bread sauce and roast potatoes, gravy, um, red cabbage would work with the pork, not the chicken. You're talking again, a good eight or nine. So, but not a ploughman's, no. Not, not, not for me, not for me. Um, if you've got anything you want me to give a rank out of ten, I'm more than happy to do it. Um, still don't understand the question that Luna asked about how prolific was the Cup Winners' Cup. Don't really understand what that's all about. Um, league table at the moment, by the way. Let's have a quick look at the stats at half-time. There they are. Um, Possession-wise, it's more equal than I thought. I thought Arsenal had more of the ball. But shots on target, 4-2 to two in Arsenal's favour. Neither team have had a corner. Um, and look, Wolves have played OK. I think Wolves have played better than I actually thought when you look at that. But Arsenal have the lead. And I'm sure in the second half, we will see Wolves have a, have a bit of a go. But from Arsenal's point of view, it really is about trying to get that second goal and get the three points. Uh, remember, Arsenal have got a big week ahead. They've got uh, Chelsea Tuesday night, where we'll be doing a watch along for that. And then next Sunday, they've got Spurs. Now, if they can come out of this week with three wins... I still don't think it'll be enough, but at least they'll be putting the pressure. I mean, they will be top of the league tonight if they can win as well. So I just think, I just believe that Man City are going to win every single game. But Home roast, always better than the pub for me, says Josh. Oh, I don't know about that. I went for a brilliant, about the week before Christmas, I went to the, what was it called? The Punch Bowl, which is a few miles away from where I live. I think it's like Lapworth or something. Um, and I ordered the Christmas dinner. Oh my God. The roast potatoes were on a different planet. It was at, it was brilliant. It's probably the best, 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 best roast dinner I've ever had away from my house. It was lovely. Um, Dano loves a good Christmas dinner. Yeah. And, you know, the Christmas dinner is not actually that bad for you because turkey is quite good for you. As meats go, turkey and chicken are way better for you than pork, beef or lamb because they're all red meat, aren't they? Um, who do you think is going to go up in the championship, Mark? Well, let's do a bit of a championship watch because it is um, it is quite exciting there. Leicester won at lunchtime. They're top with 91. Ipswich are on 89. Leeds are on 87. And Southampton are on 84. So I think Southampton have blown it, really. Um, it was a big day in the championship. And... Um, Southampton lost to Cardiff 2-1, which is obviously very damaging for them. Um, Leicester beat West Brom 2-1. And uh, I don't think Ipswich and... Where, where are we? It's What's the date? It's the 20th today, isn't it? Um, I'm looking at the wrong date. 
So Leeds are playing on Monday. Um, yeah, but it's not it's not looking good for. Uh, I think it's looking good for Ipswich, and it's looking good for Le Leicester. I mean, Leicester look like they're going to go up. Yeah, Leicester look like they're going to go up. It's interesting at the bottom. Birmingham City are only a point ahead of safety. And uh, a Sheffield Wednesday win would take them out of it. Very, very tight down there at the moment. Where do you film the podcast, says Kenny? Sally Hill Moores Football Club. Who are into the playoffs and also into the FA Trophy final. So fingers crossed. Two trips to Wembley. How's your FPL? Says Bro. Oh, I gave up ages ago. Ages ago. Well, actually, I went longer than normal. That's what she said. Um, I think I carried on to the international break and then I just sort of stopped, which is the longest I've gone in a long time. I haven't played it for a while. Oh, no, no one understood. Would you rather be part of the X-Men or the Avengers? I don't watch either, Liam, so you can choose for me. What's more satisfying, eating after being really hungry or drinking after being really thirsty? Oh, James, that is going to be clipped and also that's going to pop off in the chat. That is the sort of irrelevant either or that gets people excited because I'm excited I don't know about you, but I'm excited. What's more satisfying, eating after really being really hungry or drinking after being really thirsty? I actually know the answer to this. On a personal note, it's thirst. I remember going for a walk when I was about 11. I was at my dad's. He'd remarried. She had two kids. He had two kids. I was one of them. It was a hot June Sunday and we went on a walk to Home Pierpoint. And I ran around and I was really thirsty and we still had about an hour to get back to the car and we had no drink. And all I could think about was I can't wait to get home and have a big drink. And it always sticks with me. Always sticks with me. It's nice to eat when you're hungry, but I think thirst is more, in my opinion. A lot of people are saying drink. Yeah. Um... Good question, James. Start bench sell. Matthias, Matthias, Scholes or Perlo? Luther Matthias was a fantastic player, you know. I'm 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 fortunate enough to know that, Michael. Um I'd put Matthias ahead of Perlo. Put Scholes ahead of Matthias. But honestly, Matthias might be ahead of Scholes. I'm just being red bias. So Perlo's getting sold, Matthias on the bench, and Scale Scholes would start. For me, if I'm being honest, you're making me hungry. You really are. Start bench sell. Number two on a train, number two on a plane, or number two on a boat. I don't know what that means, Matt. What does that, what does that mean? Oh, having a shit. Yes. I, th I thought you meant like the number two. Would you rather have a number two on the train, a number two on the plane, or a number two on a boat? Um... I th I've never, I don't know what it's like on a boat, but I think when you're on a plane or a train, in my experience, there's normally a queue. So you can't relax. You can't get naked. So I'd probably say I'll try boat, only because I don't know what that situation's like. That middle of the night water gulp hits hard, says Josh. I've played the game. I'm going to have a drink now. I've, I've conditioned myself. Do many, do many of you lot drink water? I've conditioned myself to absolutely just live off water. I mean, I'll have a cup of tea. Um, or a cup of coffee. And I'll have a wine. But I haven't put anything in my water for years. 
Like I would never have a black currant or a Ribena or an orange. I just haven't done it for years. It's just, I'm just conditioned to drink water. And I like it. I like it. HP says, do you like air up? Um, to be honest with you, it's good. But I haven't changed the thing on the top for ages. So I'm just drinking water. I just like the bottle. Do you drink tap water? I, I think it is tap water, but it's through the fridge. You know, I've got one of them double fridges. Americans know what I'm talking about. They've played the game. You know the ones where it's in your fridge and you can have ice, crushed up ice, cold water? I drink that. I, I, I have drank tap water in the past, but I don't anymore. Um, Hi, Mark. Can you read my previous super chat, says Connor? No. Oh, no, I will do. Uh, Brandon says, cold beer after yard work out of 10. A cold beer on a sunny day. I don't know about yard work, but a cold beer on a sunny day has got to be a strong nine. Rank, I'm uh, going to come back to that Nicholas Cage because I think you've got a good one going on. Let me just find... Who was it who said? We're about to start the second half here. Please do subscribe to the channel, by the way, if you're new. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, Connor. It was Connor, wasn't it? Right, I need to I need to say what I'm going to do here. I close that. And I've just lost my live chat for a moment, but don't worry. Um, it was slowing down, so I'm just going to open it up and again come back. It's still a bit slow. It's weird. I don't know why it's done that. Has anybody actually watched that film, Barbie? I just really don't see how it will ever, ever be my cup of tea. It's murder on the dance floor. Right, let's have a look. Uh, Penguin won, by the way. 51% for Penguin, 31% for Club Biscuit, and 18% uh, for Blue Ribbon. I've got to say, I do agree. I do agree. Right, let me see if I can find Connor's super chat. Hi, mate. My mate. Let's have a look. Hi mate, my core, my mate Corey is a Man United fan. He's very depressed. Any thoughts on what I should do to help? Says Connor. Well, he might feel happy tomorrow. Hopefully. Right, we're about to start the second half. Come on. There we go. Um, what's more, I've done that. If if it, if it, Kieran says if Ipswich get in the Premier League, I hope they they do better than Sheffield United. I don't think they will, mate. I think there's a massive, massive gap between the Premier League and the Championship. And I've just realised what I've done. Obviously, Man United are playing the Championship team tomorrow. Um, rate your excitement for the new Champions League format, says Shay. Honestly, I think that this new Champions League format is going to be a little bit like VAR. I don't think it's going to go down well. I think a lot of people get excited about change, but the group stage of the Champions League where you play six games, you play everybody twice, and then you go into the knockout, I don't think it was broken. I think a, t I think a league with um, 32 teams in it where you play eight games and you only play everybody once is just weird. I think it's weird that the, in football we like something that's um, logical and I don't think it's logical to have a league with 32 teams in it but you only play eight of them um, I think it's about money I think it's about two extra games I think it will become very boring very quickly because I think Real Madrid will probably win their first five games and you've only got to be in the top eight to 
go through to the knockout stage. And if you're not in the top eight, you've only got to be in the top 24 to play a playoff. So out of the 32 teams, it might be 36 teams actually, but basically the top 24 will have a chance to go through to the knockout stage. So it's just, it's almost like a friendly league. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I look, you've got to give it a chance, but I, I would give it a four. I think it's just about money, playing more games. A lot of people are very excited about it. I don't think it's very good, but you know, I think I'm in the minority with that. Um, Hi, Mark. Can you read? I've done that, Connor. Thank you. Rank flipping the pillow to the cold side on a summer night. Nicholas, you know what? I've got a silk pillow. I have two pillows in my bed. One's cotton, one's silk. On a cold night, I have the cotton one on the top because it's comforting. On a cooler night, I have the silk pillow. And when that's soft, yabba dabba do. Start bench cell. Apple pie, steak pie, cream pie. Robster, I ran straight into that. You, you're a genius. You got me excited with apple pie, steak pie, that my mouth wouldn't stop for cream pie. Well done. I very rarely get got. Start bench... Look, when I've been done, I'll tell you. Start bench cell, Nedved Del Piero, Larm. Um, bench Nedved, start Del Piero, cell Larm. Rate passing your driving test out of 10, says Matt. Honestly, I don't want to come across as arrogant, but... When I pass my driving test, I'll probably give myself a 10. Um, I passed, I failed it I failed it the first time. And the reason I failed it the first time was an absolute joke. So I did my driving test in Quinton in Birmingham, which is where I'd done all my driving lessons. And when you come out of the driving school, you come to a dual carriageway. We would always go to the middle of the dual carriageway and then go right. Every time, every single time, I had about... 15 lessons and every single time we cross the middle uh, into the middle section of the dual carriageway and go right the driving instructor said to me go straight across straight across I went right he said I told you to go straight across and I went oh, apologies it's because every driving lesson we've gone right I'm a little bit nervous and I've just got into auto mode yeah well I failed you I was flawless after that Three point turn the lot. Second driving test, I am flawless again because I'm a good driver. And um, approach a roundabout. It's a mini roundabout. And I think I'm just going to slow down and then look and go smoothly around the roundabout. And you'll love this. As I get to the roundabout, some boy racer comes from the other way at about 40. So I had to slam my brakes on. I stalled it. But as I stalled it, I kept it in gear, held the clutch, restarted it in probably 0.2 of a second. And he said to me, I probably would have failed you for stalling at a roundabout. But the way you recovered that, you probably should be racing Formula One. And I went, there's no need to for that. But just pass me. If Arsenal win both of their games before City play next, do you reckon rival fans will push the narrative we bottled a four-point lead, assuming City win out? Says Connor. <laughs> Probably. What would be three confirmed transfers for United, says Karen? If I was um, betting on United's three transfers... Ooh, Huang Hee Chan there. Huang Hee Chan. Hmm. Not quite a red for me gets a yellow card and he's been subbed off anyway um, three confirmed transfers for United it's very difficult because if they sack Ten Hag they'll probably change their transfer targets if you want three most likely transfers that I would give you I still think Elisi is likely I think Tadebo is likely and it would be Frimpong or Rabio. I mean, there could be competition for both of those, but United definitely like them a lot. Hannah says, can you rate your school experience out of 10? You see, we're getting some good stuff now. This is good from Hannah. Um, right, I've caught up on those. Thank you. 
It's only 1-0 here anyway. Arsenal fans should not be getting ahead of themselves. It's, uh, it's far from over. 1-0. It only takes a minute for it to be 1-1. One, one. Nice ball into uh, Trozard. Uh, he's, he's got through one tackle and he wins a corner. Funky J says, I think Villa will get Frimpong. That would be a bloody good signing if Villa get Frimpong. I suppose Champions League football might, might do it. Junior says, Frimpong ain't leaving. Well, he might want to stay and play Champions League football. I mean, you know, the Leverkusen story is very interesting because, because the fact that they've got Champions League football and Alonso's staying for another year, I think a few players might say, I'll stay for another year as well. Like, it, it, it's very possible. I think if Alonso had gone, then there'd be a lot of players going as well. Uh, Shane, I'm going to answer the school experience in a minute, but Arsenal are on the attack. Uh, it is a football watch along. <gasps> Saka. Is, he, Saka is off the boil a little bit at the moment. But the thing that pisses me off about Saka is, is that he has been off the boil recently, but he has had a really good season. And people really want to tell the story that he's a flop. And he's not. What do you think about this Kibior at right back? I do think he's better than Sinchenko. That's a foul. That's a foul on Saka. Uh, classic movie clip says have a look at Simon Mullock's story in the mirror about Ten Hag have you got a link oh uh, Eric Ten Hag could be handed Ajax escape route after being kept in limbo by Sir Jim I don't I don't really subscribe to it to be honest Let's marry on. Rate your cup of tea making skills. Out. I'm getting some really... People are starting to understand it now. Like, rate your grand's funeral. Rate your feelings when your first pet died. This is what we're talking about. I rate everything out of 10. But let's see what happens with this free kick first. I've got a couple lined up. Um, my school experience I've got to do. And I've also got to rate cup of tea making skills. Rice free kick crap. I don't know what the routine was, but it was rubbish. Havertz, good shot, straight at the keeper. Um, I'll rate my school experience. Um, <sighs> primary school, nine. Loved primary school, really did. Um, it amazes me because I think of myself at like nine, 10, 11. And I feel a lot older than what I think a nine, 10 or 11 year old is when I think about my kids. So I enjoyed primary school. Um, Brian says funeral food is very good depends on the funeral I've been to I've been to rubbish ones worst christening I went to actually was um, homemade sandwiches and 10 tubes of Pringles and they were all plain I was like if you're going to just buy Pringles as crisps don't just buy plain but um, secondary school experience was really, I, I didn't get to grips with secondary school because I went to quite a small primary school. Um, my mate who, who went from primary school to secondary school with me, he loved it because he was a bit of a big head. But um, I just didn't really get to grips with it. It was a massive school, secondary school, compared to primary school. And it took me, I think it wasn't until like three years of secondary school where, where, where I started to feel sort of like settled. And then I think from... 
my last couple of years of school uh, of secondary school I really enjoyed it and then I was playing a lot of football then as well um, so overall I'd probably give it a good probably give it a seven secondary school the sad thing about secondary school was that I didn't really get involved in like with girls or stuff until the very end and I didn't really go out like a lot of the lot of people go out on a Friday night down the local park and stuff. I didn't really do any of that because I was so into my football. And then in the final months of secondary school, which completely fucked up my GCSEs, to be honest, I got it the wrong way around. I really started doing all that sort of stuff. So I'd have been better off not doing it or doing it from the start. I remember doing my I remember doing my GCSEs English, and you know, like you're all sat there, like they are in the in between, is doing the thing, and just remember like spending most of my time looking at these couple of girls and winking at them they were winking back and i was like you should have been doing that for the last three years not in your bloody gcse english exam rate seb's latest parent teacher meeting says it's mid i don't know i haven't been Mark, fight, fight pie face in Plymouth or shark in water? <laughs> Kai P, KP3. I couldn't fight pie face. I just couldn't imagine it. I just couldn't be mad at that that man. Um, my cup of tea making skills are probably... Oh, if it had got that pass right, Odegaard was in. I mean, cup of teas are quite easy to make, aren't they? It's all about how long you brew it. Too long, it'll be too strong. Too short, it'll be too weak. Got to get the milk right as well. Too much milk in it, it'll be cold and milky. Too too little, and it'll be too strong. My sister, when we go around her house, they literally, it's almost like they put a pipette of milk in. Like there's... I almost go, there's no point having milk in your tea. It's like, it's piping hot, and then it's like, there's barely any milk in it. It's still quite nice, but I like a bit more than that. Casimir at centre-back says, V, we're playing Coventry. Chill out. What's the best tea? I quite like Yorkshire tea. I've only started drinking it recently, but I do quite like Yorkshire tea. Somebody just said there, rate your worst, most painful experience out of 10. Well, I've never been dumped, so I don't need to worry about anything like that. Um, I think taking away emotional pain, because I've had a few traumatic emotional events in my life that I don't really want to go into some of them grief some of them other things and we're trying to have a bit of a laugh aren't we so I'm not going to take you down that route um you know really we'll keep that back for a good talk show if I ever get invited on one I've got stories guaranteed weepers but um physical pain I think I've told it before um, I'm trying to think if there's anything worse. I mean, I got whacked around the head with a baseball bat when I was about seven, which is why my left, you might see my left eye. It, um, a lot of people have noticed it before. My left eye, the eye lid is a little bit lower on the right than the right. That's because I got whacked around the head with a baseball bat and it did some nerve damage when I was about six or seven. And it's also why I wear glasses as well. Um, but I don't really remember that much other than, you know, it's a bit like when you're playing wrestling and it says stunned. I was just sort of walking around going like this. My, like my, my brain was rattling. Um, but I think the worst painful thing, and Jesus is down at the moment, so don't worry, nothing's happening in the football. I've told the story before and I, I still get PTSD with it. Um, so basically it was, a, it was a wet day and the train came into the station. I sound like Ringo Starr. The train came into the station and the fat controller. And anyway, the train came in. And fortunately, it never happens to me, where I was stood on the platform, the train doors were right in front of me. So the train doors open. I go to get on, but I'm wearing these 
very fashionable trainers with no grip. So basically, I put my right, fight, right foot forward on the sort of metal step. And as I put all my weight there, it slipped. And my left leg went smacking into the, the stair, the, the step of the train, right on the shin. Obviously, there's a load of people behind me. So I stumbled into there. I'm very good at winning a red card and yellow cards. I always have been. So I sort of did a bit of a roll. Um, the train wasn't very full. Otherwise, I took a load of people out. And I sort of did a roll forward. And then I quickly got up and turned around and went like that. Then I realized I wasn't playing football. And so I stumbled to the chair, just got myself into the chair and thought, oh, God, what a prat. Looked up. No one was really looking. So it wasn't that bad. And... Um, Anyway, it was it was it was hurting a bit, but I thought you know that's that's shin. I've been kicked in the shin loads of times. I looked down at my jeans and there was a tear, and I thought that's not good. That's not good. And uh, I went sub time. Forgot I wasn't playing football again. I looked I looked down. I looked at the shin and I thought I don't want to lift this leg this jean up because if if it's I mean, the only other the only other time in my life that I've had a pair of jeans on and they've ripped was when I got attacked by a dog. And it and it bit me and it went straight through, like tore down the jeans. But this was like a straight line. I was like, oh my God, I've only hit a step. If it's done that to my jeans, what's it done to my shin? Anyway, I took a deep breath. I pulled it up and it was just a mass of blood and hole. And... Um, I literally got off at the next bus stop, went down and said, you need to call me an ambulance. The hospital said they wouldn't send an ambulance because it was just a leg injury. So I had to get a taxi, which was a bit embarrassing. Um, I got to the hospital and uh, this nurse took me in and uh, I was sat up and uh, she said, you might want to look down. You might want to lie back and look at the ceiling because a lot of people will pass out when we clean the wound. And I said, well, I was in the police for 10 years. I've seen I've seen gunshot wounds. I've seen knife wounds. I've seen dead bodies. It'll be absolutely fine. She was like, okay, as long as you're sure. She sprayed this salient stuff on there to clean it. The blood disappeared. I saw the bone. Next thing I did, no, I was waking up and she was saying, do you want a cup of tea and stuff to get some sugar in you? I've literally passed out. Um, and ever since then, like literally a couple of years ago, I was walking through the living room I thought I could walk from the living room to the dining room without turning the light on because I know the path. And halfway across a dark room, I whacked the coffee table that one of the kids had left out on the shin. No word of a lie. I turned the light on. The shin was fine. It just, there was no cut. It just hurt. I crumpled into a mess and the wife had to help me up to bed, into bed, and I was shaking for an hour with the sweats. That's, that's just PTSD. There was nothing wrong with the shin. It was just took me back. So yeah, that's the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to me. It was it was horrible. It wasn't even the pain. It was just seeing the bloody bone. I was just like, oh my God, oh. <laughs> passed out. I, I, will, I would tell you the dog story, but people will be like, this is meant to be a football watch along. So I feel I need to talk about football for a bit now. I've been stung by a bee in my mouth before. That, that hurt. Wasp behind the ear, that hurt. I've had someone throw a screwdriver at my at my face. That scarred me there. Same bloody eye, I think. Or is it that one? I don't know, I can't see out of that one, so I think it's that one. Right. Hair looks good today, Mark, says Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, rate... Rate your neighbours out of 10. Oh, I'm not doing that. They might be watching, Matt. Uh, Dan Fields, welcome to the Members Club. I forgot we had a Members Club here. Thank you, Dan. I've enjoyed, I tell you what, I'm enjoying the show tonight. Some, I, like, I like a bit of a... I reckon we should just stop doing that's football and get on my channel and do a Saturday night live with Goldbridge telling stories, ranking things. Rate your first car and what was it, says LFC Game. Oh, I love these. People are starting to get it now. Um, I had a... Well, the first car I had was actually a Mazda 323 I got when I was 16 for, for 200 quid. And I didn't learn to drive till I was 24. So you can tell where this is going to go. So I had this Mazda 323 that we had parked on the road in front of our house. Me and my mate used to put Oasis CDs in, sit and smoke in the car with a can for about six months. 
And then my stepdad said, you know, I could sell that car for you for 350 quid. And I was like, mm. he said, you're never going to use it. You're not even trying to drive. You're just using it as a place to not get wet and smoke and drink. And basically you've got the living room for that. And I was like, all right. Reluctantly, I sold it. Um, so my first car was when I was 24 and it was a blue Ford Fiesta. And if I drove it now, it would be fucking horrible. But I loved it at the time. What's the first, furthest you've ever cycled in a day? Says Kenneth. I've done a lot of cycling, but I don't think I've ever cycled that far. I think I think my limit is normally about five miles. I've never I've never been a long long distance cycler. I find it too, I find it a bit, I find running and cycling really boring. I don't know why Ben Foster loves it so much. Well, actually, I do. He's easily pleased. You can say, "Look, Ben, there's a blue car," and he'll go and chase it. Like he's like a dog. He like he's very very easy to please, Ben. That's why I always wear shorts. Um, I have had sleep par par angry. I have had sleep paralysis, but I've I've defeated it. I've figured a way when I've got sleep paralysis to make a noise, even though I can't move my mouth. It's basically in the throat. It's like this. And then whoever I'm in bed with wakes me up. Which is, which is actually my wife, of course. Do we see a way back for Wolves? Only if Arsenal are going to really choke. I think Arsenal have fought really well today. It's been... Look, the Premier League is a competitive league. This is what the Premier League is all about. And I think a 1-0 win away at Molyneux in mid-April is exactly what you would expect in a title race. Unfortunately, we've got Man City in this league and they're a juggernaut. But this, traditionally, would be a really good league. Trust me. I, you know, Jedis have got bloody Jedi mind tricks. Harry Potter's got his wand. Jaws has got its teeth and Goldbridge has got the cure for sleep paralysis if you want to wake up from a nightmare. Because it's happened to me loads of times. I'm in a sleep. I think I've woken up. I haven't. I'm paralysed and some ugly bird is trying to get on you and ride you and you're like, oh my God, not again. And you've got, you can't wake up because you can't move your body. So I've figured a way of going, waking myself up. But I can't wake myself up because I can't move. So I have to make a noise and get someone to wake me up doesn't work if you sleep alone. You're in big trouble then. You're just making a noise in your sleep. Uh, Tom G wants to rate the night he, he lost his virginity. Uh, oh, mine? No, not, not, no, we're not doing that. Matt says, rate a full English the morning after a night out. Oh, I'll tell you what, I would have loved one this morning. I only had two glasses. Well, no, I'd been down. I'm lying. You're not my wife. I don't know why I'm talking to you like you're my wife. I only had two glasses. I didn't. Um, yeah, I felt rough today. Oh, I forgot. I should have told you. Oh, my God. What a prat. I don't know whether... You've, uh, this is why I love these streams, because I can tell you stuff, right? So, this morning, I didn't feel... I didn't feel good this morning. And really, I should have just figured it out. It's because I'd had two, two or three drinks too many. But I decided that that wasn't the case. I decided I didn't feel good this morning. I, I decided this morning I hadn't had that much to drink. And, and, and in hindsight, I had. So I get up this morning, had a really healthy breakfast, should have had a should have had a fry up. Wolves are in, straight at Raya. Uh, should have had a fry up. Should have just gone with the whole unhealthy day, no exercise, you're hungover. Write the day off, basically, in a physical and healthy eating way. Not me. I'm like, I'm not, I'm fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with me. So good save again. Arsenal on the attack. Uh, it was offside. So... I get up this morning, I decide to make myself a smoothie. Strawberries, raspberries, chia seeds, whole milk, oats, and a few pecans. Blend it all up. I drink that. Very filling. Then I decide I'm going to do my... I saw it on the internet. I do it every now and again. So basically, you do, you do 20 press-ups... 20 second break, 20 press ups, 20 second break, 20 press ups, 20 second break, 
20 burpees, 20 second break, 20 burpees, 20 seconds break, 20 seconds, and you, you do four, right? You do four things. You finish, you do the leg climber, you know, where you're on your, all fours and you move your legs back and forward and you do this bending thing as well. Um, anyway, when I was doing the burpees, I was like, I feel shit. Like, I'm, I can't see. I'm, I'm, I'm like going to faint. And I carried on doing it. And then I finished. And I felt like I was going to throw up. And you know when like your vision goes all, your head goes all sweaty and your vision goes. I was like, I'm going to have to go and take a lie down. So basically I had to lie down for about half an hour before I felt better. I've not had that in years last time i had that was playing sunday morning football when i was about 17 i'd had about 10 pints the night before they started me up front i played for about five minutes the same thing happened got all sweaty couldn't see properly i thought i was going to throw up went into the dressing room and couldn't find a drink anywhere so i went into the away team and uh, they had these bottles of lucas aid sport and i drank three it was effectively it was stealing but i needed the sugar I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it was this morning. I don't know whether anyone's ever had that, but I felt, God, I felt, I felt rough. It wasn't a panic attack. It was a reaction to exercise. What's your worst ever blackout? You may not remember being told, says Hubbard. That, that probably look at seeing that bone. <laughs> not boner. <laughs> Imagine that. that. The worst thing you want to do is pass out when you see someone's boner. You do not want to pass out then. No, I saw the bone in my shin and I passed out. Yeah, uh, you don't want to pass out when you see. You want you want to you want to be very alert and have your legs ready. How long until AI bridge streams for you, Sebastian? I I, I don't. I think Gary Lineker, you could do an AI presenter of because he's so predictable and bland. Alan Shearer, you could do an AI of easily. Like AI works really well on predictable things. Like AI is really good on like predicting things. But I don't think I can be done on here, AI. Because I don't know what I'm going to come out with next. So how can AI know? Um, do you think De Gea will sign for a club in the summer, says Rhaegard? I really hope so. I like De Gea. I'd love to see him back. Uh, rate the de best dog breeds. That's not really it, Robert. That's like that's like top fives. How awful does it feel to watch City, Chelsea, Arsenal on the same day? It looks like a horrible experience. As went, went, yeah, but we've had a good stream. We've, we've talked about other things. Andrew Rogers has just come out with a cracker. Would you rather survive? Let me just see what happens with Wolves. Doherty's cross, corner. Would you rather survive with a lion in a cage for two hours or win the quadruple with Man City for two years in a row and why? Would you rather survive with a lion in a cage for two hours or win the quadruple with City for two years in a row and why? So I play with City and I win the quadruple two years in a row or I survive a lion for two years? for two hours yeah you know what if I survived a lion attack for two hours I don't think life would be worth living so I'd have to win the I'd have to win the quadruple twice Andrew can you imagine what a lion would do to you for two years and you survive for two hours and you survive what's your top three turn offs in a woman yeah this is where I get cancelled Asan so imagine if I said my top three turn-offs in women is how they look, how they eat, and how they smell. You, 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 you're not going to be very... And they're all hypothetical, by the way. I don't actually agree with any of that. Um, yeah, this is a question I don't want to answer. I don't, I don't really have any... I mean... I, you know what, actually? I'll answer the question in a more fair way. What... It's not about women. It's about men as well. And I don't fancy men. But what I'm saying is, what turns me off in people in a non-sexual way is bad manners. I fucking hate bad manners. It doesn't matter if you're the best looking person with the best personality. I hate bad manners. And it's not even towards me. If I see somebody treating somebody badly, I fucking hate it. I was I was having my hair cut yesterday. And the, hair, the, the guy who was cutting my hair was telling me this story about this woman in Mexico who left her cruelty is not bad manners, by the way. It's a different thing. So I don't know whether it's true. It probably is because the world is so full of evil people. Um, nothing surprises me. So basically, this woman had a 
I had a child of about 18 months um, and uh, she went on holiday with her new boyfriend and left the child in, in its room with food and water for 10 days. And when she came back, the kid had died. And in the, in, 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 in the court, she said, I thought it had given enough. I thought I'd left it enough. That sort of thing makes me want to bring the death penalty back. I can't stand cruelty and I can't stand bad manners. One's a lot worse than the other, but I just, I hate it. Absolutely hate it. Because I'm not like that. And I'm not, I haven't got bad manners either. I hate cruelty. I hate bullying. I hate people who suffer because of other people. Really, when he told me that story, I said I really was like, it didn't keep me awake at night. Like, you know, it's not, I'm not, not that it shouldn't keep you awake at night. But what I'm saying is not the sort of thing that keeps me awake at night because it makes me angry. Things that keep me awake at night are like things like, you know, I'm 100 metres from shore and uh, Jaws is closing in. I'm never going to make it. I know it's going to eat me. But that sort of thing just makes me angry. I just want to be there knocking the door down and feeding the kid. It just makes me so angry. I hate that sort of stuff. I hate injustice. Um, Wolves are having a go here. Ten minutes to go. They're having a go. Edge of the box. Cross comes in. Ray is there. Ray's had a good game. Ray's had a good game tonight. Polar bears keep Mark awake at night, says Steve. Boyd says, starving to death is a horrible way to die. Boyd, I know we're here for banter. Um, first thing I thought is, how do you know? I mean, it will be a horrible way to die, but like... Sozy being eaten by a polar bear. Sleep paralysis is the first step to astral projection, removing consciousness from physical body. It can also be reached via meditation, says South Holland. What does that mean? Armit says, how should I reply with my when my girlfriend asks me, would you love me if I was a worm? Just say no. Because you wouldn't. Harvard Egg says, I meant to black out from drinking alcohol. Worst blackout experience. Uh, I've, I, I, the only time it happened to me, and I, I wasn't aware of it, was when I lived in Ireland. We were out on a Saturday night. And one of the lads, we were at a house party, was just being really funny with me. And like, uh, we got on really well. And I went up to him, I was like, what, what is your problem? And he said, are you not going to apologise? I said, why? He said, last night, you like, you tried to do a stone cold stunner on me and then threw me down the stairs. I was like, what are you talking about? He said, you did. I said, you're talking out your ass." And then he went walking off, he brought three people over from three different groups. And he brought this girl over, he was a complete, she'd never lie, she couldn't lie straight in bed. And um, they all confirmed that I'd done it. And I said, I can't remember doing it. So I, that must have been a, a blackout. I had been drinking whiskey. So I, I, I've got no recollection of it at all. But to be fair, from the age of about 18 to 23, if somebody said the night ended with you trying to do wrestling moves on people, I would probably agree it was true. I told you the story about coming home from the local pub one night. Everyone was asleep. It was about two o'clock in the morning. And uh, they all got woken up by me riding the banister. Because, you know, like at the top of the stairs, you have your banister. Well, we had these three bits of wood. So to me, they looked like three ropes on a, on a wrestling ring. So I climbed to the top of them and I was like, can you smell what the rock is cooking? Do, 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 do. My mum was really pissed off. She said, get in the bath. Why would you ever get in the bath? But I did. She just turned on the shower. Well, I had all my clothes on. It was quite nice, actually, because it got warm. Um, rate losing a championship team in the FA Cup. Mate, rate losing to a championship team in the FA Cup, says Jurgen Klopp. 
Mate, if you want to tune into the United Stand tomorrow afternoon and find out what how I would react to losing a champion losing to a championship side, I don't think we will, but if we do, you will see. It's a knife edge game tomorrow. Like I'm confident we're going to win, but if we were to lose, I don't really know where you go from there. Reckon broke up with my girl who loves me to bits, but I can't see a future with her. Didn't know that it was going to be this hard to be honest. It sounds like a song. I broke up with my girl who loves me to bits, but I can't see a future with her. I didn't know that it was going to be this hard to be honest. She still won't leave me alone. Any advice? Um... I'll read it properly now. I broke up with my girl who loves me to bits, but I can't see a future with her. Didn't know that it was going to be this hard. She still won't leave me alone. Any advice? Well, if you've broken up with her because she's not right for you in the future, really, I've done this before. You should be very happy. Um, I was in this position once, and I really wanted to break up with them. They were very nice, but um, I knew it wasn't right for me. And I broke up with them in a nice way. And... They used to ring me up like every day and I had to be cruel to be kind at the end of the day. Just change my number because the hard bit is probably the fact that she won't leave you alone. Because if you're out of the relationship, you should be quite happy. Um, rate books that will never be released, says Matt. Well, I need to um, do something about that. How much were your veneers, Mark, says Star? Um... I don't know whether I've actually got veneers, actually. I've got fake teeth, these two. If you watch old videos, I used to have tiny teeth because they were baby teeth. Um, that one and that one. Um, I can't remember. I, I genuinely don't remember. Oh, there's a Wolves player down here. Yes, sir, says Mark, are you toxic? Well, I'll throw that to the chat. I mean, some people say I'm toxic in the United fan base. Tell me. Would you? I don't think so. Um, I think there's people who are a lot worse than me. I mean, I saw um, a YouTube video about three months ago where the title was Fuck Off Rashford. I would never allow that on the United stand. It's just, it's too, I might say it if he misses a shot, but I think in the cold light of day, that's hate. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be making it personal when you've calmed down. I don't mind saying, oh, for fuck's sake, Jackson's crap or something like that. But Arsenal City uh, with back four all season, United all injured, says Korean. Would you get into the Etihad? Would you get into the Etihad on stage and celebrate a City treble with the crowd or give you up your entire career? Yeah, I'm not. I, yeah, I'd give up my career, Wernick. Can you shout out? Well, yeah, I'm not going to do that, sheep. That's the worst, worst super chat I've had in years. Can you shout out my friend, Ice, Swall, O, and then come, please? I mean, come on. Uh, Wolves player down injured here. It's not going to lead to anything. Five minutes to go. Still 1-0 to Arsenal. Arteta looks a little bit concerned. It's a, it's a big difference getting a win and a draw. In this situation. What was your top three school subjects? Says Diane Shaw. Definitely PE number one. Um, I broke a school record that's irrelevant actually. But basically we played football every Thursday in the final year of GCSE. And uh, we used to have a match every Thursday in PE. And... Uh, I scored every single week, apart from the last week, and I got sent off. So I didn't break the record, actually, but um, the reason I got sent off is because everybody knew that if I scored in the final week, I'd have done it every single week, and I'd been talking about it all week. So they basically man-marked me with about, with about three players. So I got a bit frustrated, kicked out with somebody, got sent off, and then... Um, we both got sent off, actually. And then uh, as the PE teacher sent me off, I told him to fuck off. And he, he, I thought he was going to knock me out. As you know, you know when someone runs towards you, you know, you've gone too far. I was, I was like, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, 
yeah, so PA, PE number one, probably English number two. It was very, obviously, creative. Uh, and number three... I thought it was art because I just used to spend the whole, t you know, sh the the art teacher would come up with something stupid like draw a bloody circle with shading or paint this fruit bowl. And I just used to design kits. That's all I used to do in art. And I thought they were very good. I've never watched the movie Stand By Me. So McInerney says... Rate the movie Stand By Me and do you think it's a film everyone should watch? Never watched it. So I don't know. Should I watch it? Rate Turkey Twizzlers, says Matt. I don't know what they are. I've never had one of them in my life. Apparently Jamie Oliver doesn't like them though. Such a boring match, says Sidant. A boring match, yes, but certainly a match that if they were to win would be massive for Arsenal. I mean, if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd be very happy with this game. If you win it. It shows strength of character, clean sheet, away against a good side. I think for Arsenal, if they can win this, and I'm not trying to jinx it, Arsenal fans, don't worry, but I think if they can win this, it's fantastic. Mark, can you say happy birthday to my friend? Yeah, I'm not really... Me, Mo Lester, yeah. Joshua, great. Uh, thoughts, opinions on United's medical teams is current. Look, I don't want to get into any of that. I, I know there's people out there tweeting about it, going mad about it. We've got a massive game tomorrow. I don't want to be going into it negative because you, you can give players an excuse. We've still got Rashford. We've still got Hoyland. We've still got Ganacho. We've still got Bruno. We've still got Maynou. We've still got Maguire. We've still got good players. It's Coventry. We're the favourites. Coventry can beat us. But I don't want to talk about these injuries because all people are doing is moaning about injuries. And I'm like, we haven't played the bloody game yet. We've had injuries all season. People pick and choose when injuries are a thing or not. We've just got to get on with it. Got a massive game tomorrow. Got Sheffield United on Wednesday, who just got battered at home. And then we've got Burnley. So we've got three games in a week. We need to win all three. We need to go into it with a bit of positivity. Which league would you describe as a farmer's league, says Ray? French. Sorry. James says, I've got a spare tick if you if you want to watch Coventry. Mate, I, I could have been in a box. I get off of them all the time. I mean, I can obviously buy them myself, but you know what my job is. You know what I'll be doing tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon. United stand, watch along. And I never understand, you know, occasionally when I'm doing a show, I'll see I'll see I'll see somebody or on Twitter. Uh, bro doesn't even go to games and all this lot. And I'm like, I've been to Man United loads of times in my life. And I will go again. But when I do the United stand, we get between 40 and 100,000 live viewers. It's not just the sort of thing where you can go, ah, I'm not going to do it today. I mean, I can do that, but it, but it's a little bit more than... Look, I don't. I think unless you've been in that position, I don't think it's as easy as going. Yeah, I'm, oh, no, I'm not going to bother today. But you get people going. Oh, I'd go to the game. Well, I don't think you would actually. I don't think you would, and it's not a financial thing. You you sort of get a bug of that is your match day routine and interacting with people. It's just it's a good feeling. So don't judge it until you've done it. Would you consider yourself as a potential up-and-coming farmer? What kind of animals? Polar bear in the backyard, would you have, and would they survive? I do like um, Clarkson's farm, but I do also think that, you know, like the Daniel Day-Lewis... Oh, Saka, what a run! Nah, over the bar. Six minutes added on, 91 minutes played. I do... You know, Daniel Day-Lewis is a fantastic actor, but he's now a carpenter in France 
just like turned his back on it once the once the quiet life i have i do sometimes think that that i sometimes you know on a bad day like a busy day i sometimes think i'd love to just stop and do some gardening or be a plumber or something like that it's weird I don't know what that means. I know like when you fall off a cliff in your dreams and you wake up, it's about having enough time. But I don't know what it means when you think about stopping doing this to do something that's just quite, I don't know. There's nothing, I don't know. I'd also, I'm also quite attracted by the idea of if you do this, you should cherish it because I used to have jobs like this. Um, when you finish your job at five, you don't think about it or do anything about it until the following day at nine o'clock or when you finish on Friday, you're not, you don't work until Monday. That's, I love what I do, but I haven't had that in years. Like the, that, that, that ability to just and people say, well, have a break. Well, you can always have a break. You can have a night away. You can have a week away, whatever. But you're still coming back to it. Uh, we've had nearly three minutes. Luna says, some people don't understand you're in work when you're not on. Do you have any player issue jerseys from the 90s? I managed to get the Ireland shirt when we failed to qualify for Euro 96. I've got a United red top from 92 um, and I've got a Cantona away um, which I've worn before. You know, the blue one with the black paint splattering. Good save from Saar there. Martinelli nearly scored. Um, I've also got the black sharp view cam as well. So I've got three from the 90s. Seb's got the best one, though. He's got a signed Rasmus shirt. So in 30 years' time, I don't think this... The only problem is it's this season's kit. <laughs> so it's not... It's Unless we... Well, if we can win the FA Cup, at least it might make it a memorable kit, but it's not going to be a memorable... It's like, it's like Ranić's season, isn't it? There's just nothing memorable. What was that kit that we wore under Ranić exactly? People don't know your streams help other people's mental health, says James. I, I just genuinely enjoy them. This this game's been a hard watch, but um, we've had some good conversations. Arsenal still struggling to put the ball in the back of the net. But from Odegaard, that's, and why am I clapping? I'm not even an Arsenal fan. That's a fantastic finish. I think they should have scored anyway, but it got blocked. And then Odegaard is almost level with the touchline and curls it in. And uh, a 2-0 win for Arsenal. They've had to really battle for this. Really, really had to battle for this. But um, Odegaard scores to make it 2-0. Please do subscribe, by the way. We're, very, we're only 100 away from 141,000. So thanks for everyone who's tuned in. Um, but Odegaard gets Arsenal the points. They will be top of the league tonight. And I tell you what... Um, have you seen The Prestige, says Phil Mitchell? I have. It's very good. What I will say is, I said it on the podcast with Will, I thought Arsenal would drop points and I thought Liverpool will drop points tomorrow. So that's one down, keeping the title race going. And um, they've got a tough week, Arsenal. They've got a very tough week. And um, Chelsea on Tuesday. But what we don't want is what happened last year, where you look at the fixtures and you go, oh, oh Chelsea-Arsenal will be a good game, or Spurs-Arsenal will be a good game. They won't be a good game if they drop points in games like this. This keeps it going. I still think Man City juggernaut will win it, but if Arsenal win every game, then Man City can't win the title to the final day. So it keeps it going. May the best team win tomorrow, says James, Coventry fan. Yeah, I'm sure you'll all be tuning in to the United stand. Hopefully only for 10 minutes till United are 3-0 up. Junior Film says we are back. Front post glitch says the good lad. Dano says what about fourth place? Uh, Villa. 
Villa have got the momentum. Spurs don't play. Spurs don't actually. Play. Spurs when Spurs next game. I don't think Spurs play. For some reason, I don't think Spurs are playing until. Are they playing midweek? I don't think they play midweek. I don't know why Spurs aren't playing midweek. I don't know why Spurs aren't playing midweek. They end up with quite a few games in hand. But um, final whistle's gone there. Um, Villa play tomorrow. And Villa don't play midweek either. So they could go six points ahead of Spurs if they win tomorrow. Interesting. Anyway, it's been an interesting evening of football. Um, Chelsea blew it against City, but Arsenal fighting back with a good win at Wolves. 2-0. Strong win. Very good win when you're in a title race, which Arsenal still mathematically are. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, by the way, and smash a like on the video. Um, and are you going to do Liverpool against Fulham? I can't because it clashes with United, I think. I'm sure I looked at it and it wasn't possible. Let me just double check. Yeah, Fulham Liverpool's 4.30. United are kicking off at 3.30, so it's impossible. It's impossible. It they they there's no I could, there's no game I can do tomorrow that wouldn't cross with the United FA Cup game, so I can't. Um, legends really enjoyed the show tonight in a different way. It was very good. Uh, you're absolute legends. Have a great evening, whatever you're doing. Take care. I'll speak to you all soon. Tomorrow is a big day for United. Thanks for watching.